Are you ready? Here it goes. The pragmatists on this website will log on and tell you the most effective way to fix a world accelerating into full-blown climate collapse is to wait on a gridlocked contact Congress, play by all the rules, and always consider the optics. And then I posted it with this image. Go ahead, get in the pond since you want to act like a silly goose. And let me just tell you, um... A lot of people got really mad at it, okay? Like, a lot of people got really fucking mad at it. And I mean really fucking mad at this tweet. Like, really fucking mad at this tweet. I'm talking hours of people getting mad at this tweet. Hours. Look at this thread. This thread here splits off into, like, 15 other threads. And these threads are all people getting really angry. Super, super, like, just, it just never ends. It's just endless, endless re replies. I am talking, I got, like, hundreds of replies, okay? And then I made another meme, like, within minutes afterwards, and other people got really mad at this one. Not nearly as mad. Most people were reacting to the other one, which was this one. I didn't break the Discord. Okay, I, I did a little bit, but not hard. And there's times, listen, I, re I know the handbook. I know when I can break the handbook, okay? She, her, Gatsby Cat. You trying to tell me a system that watched as 625 Americans died from a preventable disease and basically fumbled everything isn't handling global climate disaster and we might have to fend for ourselves? Yes. Yes. And that meme with the other one triggered a day of people getting very angry at me. And I want to make something clear. Are you all ready? Okay, actually, no. We're going to see whether people actually know this answer already. Because my audience should... People who listen to me regularly should know this already. It looks a little Anprim. Anprim and and, and Eco use the same thing. But that's okay. It doesn't really matter. We'll talk about that later in full. But here we go. Ready? There we go. So most of my audience realizes that I am not an electoralist. That I don't believe in electoralism. Um, and... I want to talk about what this means, okay? Because when I say I don't believe in electoralism, what people say immediately, and by the way, this is a conversation I had once with uh, a long time ago with a tanky. Um, and the tanky expressed the same frustrations, although they had a different position than I did. But we both are anti-electoralists. One just doesn't believe in voting, and the other, and me, I do think that voting can be helpful. It wasn't famous for us. Let's talk, let's talk about electoralism, okay? When people, when I say I'm against electoralism, the first response that everybody gives me is, what, you mean you don't believe in voting? What, you mean you don't believe in voting? What, you mean you don't believe in voting? What the fuck? And in fact, one of the comments that I got on my, um, on my post was, well, why not both? And I'm like, why not both what? What do you mean by why not both? And Let's go back and look at the meme. And I'm like, hold on a second. These are exclusionary. The pragmatists on this website will log on and tell you the most effective way to fix a world accelerating into full-blown climate collapse is to wait on a gridlocked Congress, play by all the rules, and always consider the optics. And I got a response that was like, well, why not both? What do you mean by why, what do you mean by why not both? I'm not sure what is actually being asked of me there. Because electoralism doesn't mean when you vote. Electoralism is having faith in the electoral system and standing by that as your as your way of, of engaging with politics. This is something that I think got really messed up um, online during the like Bernie or bust arc. Um, people got so mad about roasting um, Bernie or bust or whatever, all these people, and people got so into this conversation that they forgot that Electoralism doesn't just mean when you do a vote. It isn't when you just do a vote. And being an electoralist doesn't mean uh, when you think that you should vote and do other things. You see, if you were to listen to the Democratic Party, what they would tell you is that your job is to become informed on the issues and spend your time reading analyses, reading their blogs, listening to their podcasts, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all analyzing the electoral politics in preparation for periodical elect, um, uh, periodical elections. 
and that you sh that a lot of time should be given to this because voting is the way that you change the world. But I don't believe that. I don't believe that voting is the main way that you change the world. I think you can sometimes change the world with voting, but I also think that voting um, and electioneering or election or sorry, um, electoralism and uh, um, and election nonsense um, often just wastes our time. And when you hear that, you might go, oh, are you advocating not to vote? No, 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 please go vote. I vote, everybody should vote when you have the opportunity. And if there's a key law that actually has a shot at changing things, then that's fantastic. Um, it's not a bad thing for to vote at all, okay? But there's a problem, which is that, remember what the conversation we had around force the vote? Does anybody remember uh, force the vote? Um, force the vote was a thing that was very much focused on getting AOC, Rashida Tlaib, et cetera, et cetera, um, to, uh, you know, Ilan Omar, the squad, to, uh, to refuse to confirm, um, Nancy Pelosi as the Speaker of the House unless she promised to bring a Medicare for all, um, uh, piece of legislation to the Senate. But there's a problem, which is that the Senate would not pass that. So let me ask you this. What happens if you put an incredible, incredible amount of effort into something, voting, getting everybody together, putting lots of money towards it, and then it immediately gets shot down? Where does all that effort go? Thin motherfucking air. It's gone. All the time is gone. All the effort is gone. All the energy is gone. You have functionally flushed it under the toilet down the toilet and in fact if you want to talk about something that's more useful for your time you should look at this beautiful shrek tapestry that my partner received for being a part of shrek fest right yeah yeah from shrek fest you got Oma Steve and fiona and you got oh look it's me he's got horns and everything that's from that's that's when i played farquad oh that's so pog what were we talking about? We were talking about how if you put a ton of effort into something in the electoral system and a ton of money and then it doesn't succeed, that effort goes fucking kaput in many cases. And this happens all the time. Right now, we are in a state of affairs where Mitch McConnell, Mitch McConnell's desk was called the graveyard of legislation, the graveyard of bills, because people would put thousands upon thousands upon millions of dollars into getting bills drafted, into uh, politicking, and then they would die on Mitch McConnell's desk. So all your voting, all your research doesn't mean jack shit when Mitch McConnell can shut it down. Oh, he was, he called himself the Reaper. He laughed about it on Fox News. So I want you to recognize that that is an unbelievable waste of energy, an unbelievable waste of the average person's energy. Now, is it important that we have some level of participation in this type of politics? Sure, of course it is. Um, there are votes that can really matter. For example, I think it's really important that we organize to stop the passing of some of the trans bills that are going around. However, the truth is, a lot of this is out of our hands. Once we elect our Congress people, there's almost nothing we can do to change it. Occasionally, um, occasionally we might be able to organize and send some letters and make sure that something doesn't pass, uh, doesn't pass or doesn't get through. But most of the time, our efforts would be better put elsewhere. And this is why I'm not an electoralist. I think our electoral system is so busted that most of the time that we spend talking about it and focusing on it would be better put elsewhere. I really believe that. And when I ask, when, when I challenge people on this, they just go, oh, do you mean don't vote? No, I never said don't vote. I think you should vote. I think it would be good. It's a yes and situation. Yeah, go vote. And what else? If you're not doing anything else, you're wasting time. Keep in mind 
that the, the context of this is in climate change. We know we are on a very harsh timeline for climate change. Climate change is here. Smoke season is here in Washington. Fire season is every single year destroying people's homes who then become homeless. So yeah, I'm not an electoralist. I wish I weren't so tired and exhausted from work to even engage in politics. There are creative ways to engage in politics that are more useful to your time than obsessing over Russiagate or obsessing over whatever other thing. There is occasional times, um, there are occasional times in which it will be necessary to focus on something. For example, I think it was very important when we did coverage of uh, the of the sixth, because that was a earth shaking event that involved the occupation of our capital. That's a pretty important electoral event. Did I vote for Biden? Yes, I did vote for Biden. Yes, I did. Of course, I did. Why the hell? Wouldn't I vote for Biden? It made sense to vote for Biden. It cost me nothing, and I voted for Biden. If you're capable of voting, it costs you basically nothing. That's true. That is true. But the thing that I'm not caring about is, uh, the thing that I'm trying to point out is not that, that there's a problem with vo the act of voting. Once again, again, um, the act of voting is not the problem. The problem is how much time we spent how much money, how much time, how much effort, how much organizing power we put into electoral means that are ultimately beneficial only to the uh, Democratic Party and the Republican Party. That is our problem. We, we quite genuinely have a serious problem with that. And so one of the things that I've been thinking about a lot and reading about a lot and, and theorizing about quite a lot is how do we change that focus? You'll notice in my show, like, I don't think that I'm part of any sort of movement or anything like that. I run a political edutainment show, but I spend a lot of time teaching people about stuff that I think matters, not talking about the minutia of electoral politics, not spending a whole lot of time obsessing over every word that drops out of Nancy Pelosi or Joe Biden's mouth or Kamala Harris's mouth. I don't fucking give a shit about that. What I focus on is giving you the ideas you need to become an effective political actor. That's what I want to do. I want to give you analytical skills, critical skills. I want to talk about key issues and get to the bottom of them. Sometimes we do that via talking about art. Sometimes we do that via talking about current events. Sometimes we do that via de debates. But there's a huge problem in that people have cloven themselves to electoralism when we can all acknowledge that climate change is already here and electoralism is not going to get us the Green New Deal. If it does, that's fantastic, but there's nothing we can do. There is, like, once you cast your votes, there's next to nothing efficient, I should say. There's next to nothing efficient that you can do to impact whether the Green New Deal passes or not. The lines are already drawn. The machine is moving at its own pace. Well, thank you, Josie Rosie. I appreciate that. Indirect democracy is kind of fucked. I mean, direct democracy has these problems as well. But guess what? There are things that we can do that are not authoritarian. There are things that we can do that are political that don't involve organizing with any party. They are actions that we take. A friend of mine, Zanzi. Anybody heard of Zanzi? He's a small smaller streamer who's been growing slowly and surely um and he has a saying that he uses all the time that goes like this politics is what you do not who you are so you can say i'm an x or i'm a whatever i'm a i'm a libertarian socialist i'm an anarchist i'm a blah 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 none of that matters politics is what you do and here's the thing there are ways for us to be political without ever casting a vote Things like deciding to uh, to sit down with your with your extended family who maybe live around you, 
and um and 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 organize a, a plan for if there's a disaster. That is politics. When if a disaster strikes and your family and your friends and your community are able to weather that healthily, you have done a politics. You have saved people's lives. You have perpetuated a uh, society of a of a of a of a type. And that's the type of politics I think we need to think about a lot more. I've told this story a million times. Um Good faith actor says, I think a lot of lefties don't appreciate that the U.S. system isn't malfunctioning or broken. Broken, It's functioning as intended. Yes, it is. It isn't broken. It is designed this way. We have to change it seriously if we want it to function differently. It is supposed to design like to be like this. It is the checks and balances, certain checks and balances, ones that favor the status quo are put into place to preserve the status quo. They're not there because the the founding fathers were 100% progressives and they designed a system that would advance forward. If that's true, they would have just made a progressive system. No, they made a system that was designed from its bottom up to favor land-owning white people. That's just a fact. Oh, hi, Doe. Doe, oh, show off the new Doe emotes, everybody. Show off the new Doe emotes. Hi, Doe. Okay, let's look at the screenshots. Here we go. POV, you're about to get game ended. I would say then that I'm much less advanced than Mr. Chomsky in this respect. That is, I admit to not even, to, I admit not being able to define, not even propose an ideal social model for the functioning of our scientific or technological society. But I believe that political power also exercises itself through the mediation of a certain number of institutions that look as if they have nothing in common with political power and as if they are independent from it. But in fact, they are not. One knows the university and more generally all teaching systems. Uh, oops. Here we go. Particularly the ones that appear to be neutral and independent and to attack them in such a way that the political violence which has always exercised itself obscurely through them, will finally be unmasked so that one can fight against them. If we seek to advance straight away a profile or formula of the future of society... Oh, did I? Oops, I'm sorry. Did I jump forward? Oh, God damn it! Ah! Sorry, I'll go back, I'll go back, I'll go back. Sorry, 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 I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. Okay, let's start over. Oh my God, I'm gonna start over. I'm such an idiot. I'm such an idiot. Okay. <sighs> Boomer. I would say I'm much, le much less advanced than Mr. Chomsky in this respect. That is, I admit to not being able to define, not even to propose, an ideal social model for the functioning of our scientific or technological society. But I believe that the political power also exercises itself through the mediation of certain number of institutions that look as if they... Wait, can't I just watch this segment? Anyway, whatever. Have nothing in common with political power and as if they are independent from it. But in fact, they are not. One knows the university and more generally all s teaching systems, which appear to disseminate knowledge, are made to maintain a certain social class in power and to exclude the instruments of a power of another social class. Another example is psychiatry, which in appearance is also intended for the good of humanity and for the knowledge of psychiatrists, but in reality is another way to bring to bear the political power over a social class. This is Foucault. Justice is yet again another example. It seems to me that the real political task in our contemporary society is to criticize the working of institutions, particularly the ones that appear to be neutral and independent, and to attack them in such a way that the political violence, which has always exercised itself obscurely through them, will finally be unmasked so that, no one, can, so that one can fight against them. If we seek to advance straight away a profile or formula of the future of society, without having thoroughly criticized relations between the different forms of political violence that exercise their power within our society, we run the risk of letting them be reproduced. Even in the case of the noble and apparently pure forms such as anarcho-syndicalism. Yes. And Lauren X. Pandemus says this is what BLM did to the police. Yes, it did. Now, it didn't do the job completely, but it did do a good job.
So, I want to talk about something about this. I want to give an example of this, okay? You might think, oh, but education is very good and valuable, and it is. It is. And universities are very interesting and do some very cool things. That's true. That is very true. But I want you to notice something. Here in America, in economics, econo the, the schools of economics in America have made a decision as to which version of economics they think is correct. Marx is barely talked talked on. Other theories, leftist theories of economics are not even explored. They're not it's not even that they're like not favored. They're just not taught at all. They are taught as if they don't exist. Even though it isn't some like arcane absurd conspiracy theory knowledge. These are entire nations, full massive nations have built their their countries with great success on some of these ideas and they're not even considered at all you were taught marx in college were you taught marx in economics or were you taught it in something else so this is just a small example this isn't an all-encompassing example of how institutions can perpetuate themselves and the structures that they were built on instead of actually doing what they claim that they do this is also how something like um, a, a science that we recognize can be good, like psychiatry or um, or, um, um, or or psychology can become corrupted. Wow, that's wild. So there's a whole lot of, I learned Marx in my 400 level anthro class for my major. There you go, finally. Yeah, Blanchardism is another great example that these, um, these structures can be used, not what they say they're used for to help people or whatever, but that becomes the veneer by which they just perpetuate themselves. And we have to be very, 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 very critical of these things. This is why I advocate criticizing um, carefully and honestly and well, various institutions that we take for granted in our society. Notice, um, notice that, uh, it, it's funny. I was recently canceled over this whole, uh, self-diagnosis take, which I don't think was cancelable at all and nor did anybody else, but regardless. But notice that nobody cancels me over when I criticize welfare which I do all the time. How many times have you all tuned in to hear me talk about how uh, means-tested welfare is really fucked and basically forces people into a position where they can never get out of it and that we have no, there's no reason for us to do means-testing outside of ideology. It's cheaper to not means-test. It is cheaper to not means test. You have to hire less bureaucrats. You have to, it, it's an easier process. People get the help that they need. And yet we do it. We have these means testing programs. Why? Because it is essential that the state makes you feel bad for leaning on it. Saul Gracchus says, hell, bog standard Keynesianism was not touched on much in econ through my major. means testing is like saying oh you make 30k a year well you don't need food stamps at all you must be cheating means testing is making people who have no job provide a document that they have no job however you do that and you're very unclear about it and it passively filters people out of the system because you make it hard means testing is when you have a booklet this large to apply for health care so if you want to get state health care because you're poor and your tooth is rotting um you have to go through a document this big um, there's a really great video that we've watched here on the channel before of, um, of, uh, what's her name? Um, Katie, uh, what's her, what's her name? Katie Porter? Is it Katie Porter? Yeah, Katie Porter. U.S. Representative Katie Porter, um, is roasting this guy by going through in, on, in Congress, um, like making him, asking him the questions that are on a welfare form. And he's offended because he didn't know that all of these questions were on the welfare form or he he said he didn't know and when she asked him he won't answer them because they're invasive but then it but but yet the system that he's voting to impl implement he will not answer because it's invasive 
isn't that a bit messed up? Sometimes unemployed people need to provide proof that they're looking for a job, like print out emails to keep getting welfare. Yep. Yep. Yep, indeed. And there's no reason to do that. All it does is create a mess. It doesn't save us money. It costs us money to implement things like that. So these are some of the things that I'm talking about here. These are the reasons why I think we should criticize these institutions strongly, why I think we should be willing to criticize psychiatry, why we should be willing to criticize uh, diagnosis systems, why we should be willing to criticize uh, medical gatekeeping, why we should be willing to criticize election electoralism, why we should be willing to criticize these and not just shut them down as if you're being some sort of conspiracy theorist. You're not a conspiracy theorist for pointing out that these systems work in certain ways. I mean, think about it in a more mundane sense, okay? When we were when we did the blizzard coverage, which many of you saw, um you many of you saw the blizzard coverage. However, when we did the blizzard coverage, what did we notice? It was systemic abuse. It was abuse that's designed to keep victims coming in and to keep protecting the people on top, that the structures were designed to maintain it. They, they design it such that the people who are doing the abuse report to other abusers that the only person who can get rid of the abuser is another abuser. And that way, anybody who comes in is by definition under their power unless you leave. And if you leave, there's a price. And that's how a lot of our structures are built. They're built in such a way that the only person who gets to determine whether it's right or wrong how you're being judged or touched or talked to or touched or anything like that is the person is another person who does the exact same thing as the person who might be mistreating you.